from the 124,000 Sahaba radiallahu anhum, Allah Rabbul Izzah had given special privilege to 313. So at the time of the demise of the Messenger Sallallahu there were at approximately 124,000 companions that had accompanied Nabi Sallallahu for the Hajj. And they all were virtuous in their own right. But 313 of those had a special virtue. And those are the 313 who participated in the Battle of Badr. And from the 313, there were 10 who were given glad tidings of Jannah. <coughs> Nabi Sallallahu took their names and outlined their virtue and said that they are in Jannah. And from that 10, there were four who were given a special virtue within the 10. And from the four, the most virtuous is none other than Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was born two years before the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He had a similar upbringing to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the countryside. He was the companion of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam before Nubuwa. He was his neighbor and his friend. And when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam had announced the call to the Deen of Islam, then Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the fourth to accept. From the women, it was Sayyidina Khadija. From the boys, it was Sayyidina Ali. From the slaves, it was Sayyidina Zaydab, Sayyidina Zaid. And from the free men, the first to accept was Sayyidina Abu Bakr as siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was shortish, shortish in stature, he was fair in complexion, he had a broad forehead, he had thick eyelashes, he had very little hair on his chest. And when he became older, he dyed his beard with henna. So that is part of the sunnah of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He was close to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa in his early life. And therefore, when Nabi Sallallahu presented the message of the Deen of Islam to him, he had full confidence and accepted the message of the Deen of Islam. And he had become disillusioned with the religion of the people of Makkah. As a young boy, one day, he went with his father to worship the idol. And when his father stepped aside, he said to the idol, Oh, idol, I'm hungry, give me some food. There was no response from the idol. He said, oh, idol, I want clothes. Give me some clothes. No response from the idol. He said, oh, idol, I have many needs. Are you going to help me? No response from the idol. Eventually, he, said, he took up a stone and he threw it at the idol. And he said that if you cannot help me, then you are not worthy of being worshipped. And that from that moment, he abandoned the worship of idols. When he was 12 years old, he went on a business expedition to Syria. And Nabi Sallallahu was also on this expedition. And on this expedition, they met the monk Bahira. And the monk asked Abu Bakr, the young boy, who is that? Referring to Muhammad ibn Abdullah, our master Sallallahu Alaihi who must have been about 14 years old. And he said, he's Muhammad. And the monk said that, you see that position where he's sitting now, that tree. It's only a Nabi who will sit under that tree. The last person to sit under that tree was Isa, the son of Maryam. And the fact that this young boy is sitting under that tree is a sign that he will be the final messenger. So this was a prelude for Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu as to what was to come. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam then invited him towards the deen of Islam, he accepted and he started calling others and many of the initial Muslims accepted Islam on his hands. 
It was a time when people were being persecuted for their deen. They were being tortured. They were being tormented. And because of that, there was great hardship. Despite that, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu remained steadfast. Among those who were suffering greatly at the hands of the kuffar was Sayyidina Bilal. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr purchased him because he was a slave and set him free. And many of the other Muslims who were slaves, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu set them free. And then his father Abu Quhafa came to him and said to him, that okay, I see, you know, that you freeing all these slaves, but you're choosing the weakest of the weak and the most helpless and the most, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, who are unable to assist you in any way. So why don't you choose the strong ones and free them? And he then told his father that I'm not freeing them for my own benefit. I'm freeing them for the sake of Allah. And there were verses were revealed. You know, praising the sincerity of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhum. When the Muslims reached the number of 30, then he asked Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam permission to go and announce the call to the deen of Islam openly. Up until this point, it was secret. So he went into the Masjid al-Haram and stood before the Kaaba and delivered a khutbah, a sermon, in which he called the people towards the deen of Islam. And the moment he started speaking, the kuffar immediately pounced on him, started beating him up. They hit him with their sandals and their shoes on his face to such an extent that his face was so swollen that you could not differentiate between what was his nose and what was his cheeks. He fell unconscious and he was taken to his home. And there he was treated and when he gained consciousness, what was the first question he asked? Ma fa'ala Rasulillah. Ma fa'ala Rasulullah. What is the condition of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Where is he? That was his only concern. And eventually, until he was not taken to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and saw Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is safe, he did not rest. And his mother had to take him to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was his intense Love for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had announced that Allah Rabbul Izzah had taken Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the epic journey of Mi'raj from Makkah al Mukarramah to Masjid al Aqsa and from Masjid al Aqsa to the seven heavens and beyond, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam announced this to the Kuffar, and they then went to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and said, you heard what Muhammad is saying, that he traveled from year to year and year to year in one night. And they said it in such a way to try and create doubt in Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, is this what he's really saying? And when he was told that, yes, this is really what Muhammad is saying, he said, then I believe it. Because I believe something even more greater than that. And that is that Jibreel comes to him and brings revelation to him. That is far greater than this journey. And that is when Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was given the title of Siddiq, <coughs> the truthful one. And he has a special position and a special maqam, the maqam of Siddiq in this ummah. The most virtuous individual in this ummah. And therefore when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on to Mount Uhud once. And he had with him Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ali. And he said to the mountain, the mountain was quivering. And he said to the mountain, be still. You have on you a Siddiq and two martyrs with you. Or three martyrs with you. So this was a special maqam. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was always desirous that he be with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam undertakes the hijrah and Allah Rabbul Izzah had chosen him for that. But before that, when the difficulties of the people of Makkah had become too much for him to bear, 
Then one day he decided that he was going to make hijrah first and foremost to Abyssinia. And on his journey to Abyssinia, he reached a point called Barkud Rimad, which is in Yemen. And there he met a person called Ibn Daghina. And Ibn Daghina asked him that, Oh Abu Bakr, where are you going? And he said that I can no longer live in Mecca. So therefore I'm going, traveling on the land of Allah, and so that I can worship Allah. And Ibn Daghina says, A man of your caliber, La yakhruju wa la yukhraj. He does not leave Makkah, nor should he be made to leave. I will take you back on my security. And then he said to him, that, Oh Abu Bakr, you such a man who joins family ties, who assists those in need, who, who carries the load of those who are too weak, who enjoys goodness. Now, if you listen to this description that Ibn Daghina had given of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, then you'll realize that this is the very description which Sayyidina Khadija had comforted Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with when he came back from the cave of Hira after having received the first revelation and he was perturbed and very anxious at that time. And then she comforted him by outlying his virtue. And when she spoke of his virtue, and you look at, Sayyid, uh, at Ibn Daghina describing Sayyidina Abu Bakr, then undoubtedly you'll realize that Sayyidina Abu Bakr was a mirror reflection of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr came back to Makatul Mukarrama under the protection of Ibn Daghina on the condition that he worships his Lord in his home. That was the condition that the people of Makkah had put. That he can come back, he will be protected, but he must only worship Allah in his home. Then Sayyidina Abu Bakr built for himself a musalla in the courtyard of his home. And the entire night, he would go there and recite the Noble Quran. And all the women and all the children would secretly come out to listen to his recitation of the Noble Quran. And the people of Mecca became perturbed. And they said to Ibn Daghina, that this man is here on your protection, but look what he's doing. He's enchanting and trapping our women and our children. So tell him that he has to worship his Lord secretly in his home, or otherwise we are going to violate your protection that you had given him, and you would obviously not want that. So Ibn Dakhina comes to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and tells him that, look, you cannot worship your Allah in this way. You need to be more discreet. And at that point, Sayyidina Abu Bakr says that, I'm returning to you your protection. I suffice for the protection of Allah. Then when the time came for the Hijrah to Makkah to Mukarramah, from to Madinah to Munawwara, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi came to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and said to him that Allah has given me permission to make Hijrah. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, asked, O oh, Nabi of Allah, sahbah will I be your companion? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yes, you will be my companion. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr had kept two camels waiting for this occasion. And Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, who was there, says that when Nabi Sallallahu replied with the affirmative that Sayyidina Abu Bakr will be the companion, giving him the good, good news, he started crying. That is how happy he was. And she says, till that point, I did not know that a, a man could cry out of happiness. That such elation that it brought him tears. And when Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi proceeded out of Makkah, they then took refuge in the cave. The cave of Thawr. And when they entered the cave, Sayyidina Abu Bakr goes in first. And he cleans out the cave to ensure that there's nothing harmful in the cave. He closes all the holes, which could be for snakes and scorpions. And then he doesn't have anything left to close one of the holes. He tells the Messenger Sallallahu that the cave is now clear, you may come in. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr then take refuge in the cave. While Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is resting on Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he puts his one foot to close the one hole that he did not have anything to close. And 
Sayyidina Abu Bakr, uh, Nabi Sallallahu is resting on his lap. And a scorpion comes and bites Sayyidina Abu Bakr. But he doesn't want to move because he doesn't want to disturb the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until a, a tear of his falls on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's body and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is alerted to what is happening. The people of Makkah are looking for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr. They had entered the cave and the spider had spun a web around the cave. When they come outside the cave and they're looking, they've searched all over. And one of them say, that, let us go look in the cave. And Abu Jahl, the very enemy, says, no, I know this tree and I know the spider's web here. They're not in this cave. While they're standing outside, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala says to Nabi Sallallahu لَوْ نَذَرَ أَحَدُهُمْ إِلَى مَوْذِي قَدَمَيْهِ لَرَآنَا That if he just looks downwards, he will see us. And in that point, Allah Rabbul Izzah reveals verses. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said that مَا ظَنُّكُمْ بِثْنَيْنِ اللَّهُ ثَالِثُهُمَا Then what do you think of the two? Allah is the third with them. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَةَ وَعَلَيْهِ وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا and like that, Allah Rabbul Izzah protected them. In the night, Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu's son would bring food. And he would gain intelligence from a certain guide. And when the coast was clear, and when it was the right time after three days, Nabi Sallallahu and Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu set off on the hijrah to Madinah Tul Munawwara. And in this journey, Suraqa, who was not a Muslim at that time, he attempted to capture them because there was a booty on the head of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr sometimes is walking in the front, anticipating that an enemy may come from this front. Then he decides to walk in the back, fearing that someone may come from the back. Then he's walking on the side at all times for the entire duration. His only concern is to protect the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Suraka comes close, he is swallowed into the earth, meaning his horse trips and falls down. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi get away. He attempts to capture them again. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi gets away. Every time he comes close, he is stopped by some hidden force. Eventually, when he meets Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi he says that, look, you are protected by a hidden force. And I acknowledge that there is something superior. Write a letter acknowledging me. Meaning I will come and meet you at the later stage and I want you to recall what has transpired. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr continue to Madinah Tul Munawwara. And as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enters Madinah Tul Munawwara, what Sayyidina Abu Bakr? The people do not know who is the Nabi and who is the Siddiq. So he stands up to start giving shade to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that they can understand that this is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is alongside Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at every juncture. One day Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, who of you is fasting today? Sayyidina Abu Bakr says, I'm fasting. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, who of you fed a poor person today? Sayyidina Abu Bakr says, I fed a poor person. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says, Who of you visited the, jinal, uh, visited the sick person? Sayyidina Abu Bakr responds, Who followed the janazah? Sayyidina Abu Bakr responds, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says, That the one who has gathered all these qualities is certainly a Siddiq and he will be freed from the fire of Jahannam. And therefore, he was given the title as Atiq. Al-Atiq, the one who was freed from the fire of Jahannam. One day Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was saying that the people of fasting will be called from the door of fasting. Jannah has eight doors. And the people of Salah will be called from the door of Salah. Meaning if your overwhelming love was for Salah, then you will be called from that door. And the people of charity will be called from that door. And the people of, uh, you know, uh, who love the Quran will be called from that door. I like that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam listed. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam outlined all the eight doors and who will enter from each door. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu asked on Nabi of Allah, 
Will there be anyone who will be called out from all eight doors? And Nabi Sallallahu said, Yes, that will be you, O Siddiq. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was alongside Nabi Sallallahu at, at each of, the, bada, of the, the battles. On the night of the Battle of Badr, Nabi Sallallahu was making dua very earnestly. He lifted his hands high and he's making dua in his tent. And in his dua, he said, Ya Allah, if this group, 313, have to be destroyed, perhaps you may never be worshipped again. And he was beseeching and beseeching Allah and calling out till Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came to comfort Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And he stood guard alongside Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the battle of Badr. And he participated in Badr, in Uhud, in all the major battles up until the demise of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In fact, the first Hajj, before the Hajj of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu appointed Sayyidina Abu Bakr as the Amir of that Hajj. One day, in the final sickness of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came out and he sat on the mimbar and he gave a khutbah. And in his khutbah he said that a servant of Allah has been given a choice between life in this world and the Akhirah and he has chosen the Akhirah. And when he said that, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu started to cry. And Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu says that, I listened to this and I didn't find anything unique about it. And I looked at Sayyidina Abu Bakr, the old man, and he was crying. And I wondered, what is it? And he then said, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, May my parents be sacrificed for you, O Nabi of Allah. He understood that Nabi Sallallahu was given a choice of life in this world, in the Akhirah, and he had chosen the Akhirah, meaning that his departure from this world, the time was imminent. When Nabi Sallallahu saw Sayyidina Abu Bakr crying, he said that no one's wealth has benefited me to the extent that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's wealth has benefited me. If I had to choose a friend, it would be Abu Bakr. But Allah is my friend. <clears throat> and then Nabi Sallallahu said that all whose doors enter directly from their homes into the masjid should be closed except Abu Bakr. He still has the right for his door to enter straight into the masjid. And he said that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is the one who had led the salah during the final sickness of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When the when Nabi sallallahu alayhi had left this world or passed away, then Sayyidina Abu Bakr was outside Madinatul Munawwara. And then he got the news. And when he came back, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was standing there with a the sword and said, anyone who says Muhammad has died, I will kill them. I will chop them off. He's gone to meet Allah and he will come back. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr went on the mimbar and he recited the verses. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُولٌ that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. Before him, there were many messengers who had passed. That if he passes away or he's killed, will you turn on your backs? And all those who were sitting in that gathering, they say that when they heard that verse being recited, it was as though it was being recited for the first time to them. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, after the demise of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, became the Khalif. And he remained the Khalif for two years and three months. And during this time, it was a very challenging time, where there was a group who said that we will not pay the zakat. The zakat was given to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and now we will no longer pay it. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, I will wage jihad against those who do not pay the zakat. Even if it was at the rope, that the camels of Sadaqah were pulled with, and they don't give that amount to me in zakat, I will make jihad against them. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu says that, at that time I thought that why the big issue? Then I realized the gravity of the matter. He lived on for two years and three months, and then in the month of Jumad al-Ukhra, around the 7th he passed away, at the age of around 63. It was the 13th year after Hijrah, he passed away, and he was buried in Alongside the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Before he passed away, he appointed Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu as the next Amirul Mu'mineen. He was known as Khalifa to Rasulillah. And that was, uh, that was a title that was specific to Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Now, you know, there are many amongst the deviated sects who create 
false notions. And they say that he wasn't most worthy of the Khilafah. And that he's supposed to have gone to Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said that if anybody says that I'm more virtuous than Sayyidina Abu Bakr, I will lash that man 80 lashes. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Ali had a cordial and a very, very friendly relationship. After the demise of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the Khalif, one day Sayyidina Abu Bakr came out of the masjid and he saw the son of Sayyidina Ali walking, Sayyidina Hassan, and he picked him up and he put him on his shoulders and he said to Ali radiallahu ta'ala, Shabihun bin Nabi, laysa bi Shabihun bi Ali, that this young boy, he resembles his grandfather, not his father. And that was obviously a praise to Sayyidina Ali that his son resembles the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this was the type of uh, you know, interaction between them. It shows that there was no bad blood as being portrayed by the deviated sex. So may Allah Rabbul Izzah grant us the correct understanding, the correct belief with regards to the Sahaba. It is our belief is the Ahlul Sunnah that Sayyidina Abu Bakr is the most virtuous. He, he was and he is the most vir- worthy of being the first Khalif. And that Nabi Sallallahu had appointed him uh, to perform the Salah. And this was an indication. May Allah Rabbul Izzah protect our Aqeedah and save us from all sorts of deviation.